Good morning and welcome to Cindy's Kitchen. So glad that you're here and happy Tuesday. Are you brand new? Well, if you're brand new, we're glad to see you and we hope that um, you will enjoy today. This is a cooking community, so not just a cooking show. Uh, we wanna talk, we wanna share recipes, share ideas, share lives, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, let's see. Let's see what is going on with our, our Facebook Live today. You never know. You just never know. Um, if you're interested in seeing some past recipes, uh, please feel free to either just go to Cindy's Kitchen Facebook page and scroll down. That's obviously the easiest thing to do to watch older recipes. You could always go to YouTube. We have a YouTube channel and you could uh, scroll that direction. That would be easy. So you certainly could do that. Uh, so there you go. Good morning, Janet. Good to see you. Hello, Alice and Loisanne. Good to see you guys. <clears throat> I, you know, when I miss a day and I miss Tuesday, I feel like it's like forever, which is silly, right? Uh, I miss, no, I miss Saturday, not Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. I miss Saturday. And um, when I miss a day, I really kind of feel like I haven't, <laughs> it's like I haven't talked to my friends in quite a while, which is, you know, just, it is what it is, just so funny. Um, I hope you're not near that roaming tiger. There's a roaming tiger in Houston? Yes. Oh. South Houston. Oh, South Houston. Okay. Well, it's in South Houston. I'm kind of in North Houston, Louisiana, and Houston is huge. Like, huge. Uh, it would be like saying uh, South Chicago or North Chicago or South LA or North LA. I mean, you know, so it's a, it's a pretty big place and I think I'm safe from the tigers, the roaming tigers. <laughs> Good morning, Gail from sunny Chicago land. But Loisan, thank you for uh, 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 keeping track with me, making sure I'm safe and all is good and right with the world, right? Um, I hope everybody's doing okay. Mm. I will share that the reason that we didn't have um, Cindy's Kitchen on Saturday was because they were finishing up the last part of the shower in the, in the bathroom that got totally demolished uh, because of when we had the freeze down here in Houston and the pipes all burst. And so uh, they put the glass in the shower. And now, let me just tell you that my husband is so excited that he can now shower in the master bathroom. So it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. Anything going on great in your lives today? Oh yes, Jess is back from the beach. Um, so we were all jealous while she was out on the beach, um, but, but she's back. And so that's, a, that's an awesome thing. Uh, I certainly missed her. I'm sure you guys missed her as well. Uh, we'll just have to all be a little jealous that she went. Um, anybody have exciting food on your menu for today? Loisanne and Gail and Alice, what are you guys cooking today? I'm interested. I'm interested. Um, so, while you guys post, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm only doing one recipe today. And, and you know that uh, normally on Cindy's Kitchen, I usually do at least two and sometimes three or four, you never have any idea. You know, sometimes I'll do an appetizer, entree and dessert, or I'll do a couple of dips, um, or I'll do food and a drink. Um, but today I am doing just uh, one recipe. Part of that is just there's a lot going on in Cindy's life, uh, not just in Cindy's kitchen, but Cindy's life. And so, um, and second, this just sounded really good, and so I'm just gonna focus on that. Hello, oh, Gail's having shrimp scampi. Yum, that's one of our favorites. <laughs> you know, I haven't asked to see her tan lines. <laughs> Loisin. All right, well, let us, if you don't mind, let us go ahead and do a, a cheers. Shall we do a cheers? Cheers, coffee clinks. Everybody take your last sip of coffee or hot tea 
pull up a bar stool or a table, uh, a chair at the dining room table, or if you're in your living room, stretch out your recliner and let's get busy, shall we? Lois, hello. Mmm. Beverly's Hill from North Carolina. All right. So the hint for today. Hey Heather, good to see you. Happy Tuesday. The hint for today was layers. And we had some good guesses. We had a uh, layer salad. We had um, a layer dip. We had lasagna. So those were all some of the dips. I mean, some of the, the guesses that we had. Um, we are doing a layer dip. But I know when you think of either like a seven layer dip or an eight layer dip or nine layer dip, however many layers you want, a layer dip, I think for the most part, we all think of a Mexican theme, right? So we think of seven layer dip that has refried beans and uh, sour cream and guacamole and then all the other stuff on top. Today, I thought it would be fun to take that idea, but use a different culture's cuisine with that same thought process. And I wanted to do that because, you know, we've had some uh, shows in the past uh, that really focused on how most, uh, most cuisines have share. So like when you're talking about dumplings, um, you know, there are Asian dumplings and, and different kinds of those. There are German dumplings and Polish dumplings and Southern dumplings. And there's, you know, there's roll out dumplings and drop dumplings. And there's, so uh, when we did empanadas, right? So empanadas and turnovers and, you know, all of those. So most every uh, culture or most every cuisine kind of shares across the board. I haven't really heard of this one before, but I think it's gonna be lovely. And so let's just go on. Today on Cindy's Kitchen, we are going to make a Greek layer dip. Now tell me if you like Greek food or Mediterranean, you know, sometimes it's just called Mediterranean food. So Greek food or Mediterranean food. And if you do, what is your favorite that you would have? Okay, so, and then we'll get started. All right, I'm gonna start with kind of my top layers first because I've got a lot of chopping and, and stuff to do. And I'm gonna start with half, this was a half, of an English cucumber. I've just sliced it down the middle, okay? And then I'm gonna slice it uh, down the sides and I'm gonna dice this up. So that's what we're gonna start with. If you want to use, um, if you don't want to use an English cucumber, and of course, you know, one of the reasons to use the English cucumber is because uh, you don't have to peel it because the skin is edible and there, it's not seedless, but the seeds are pretty minute. So um, it allows you to not have to seed it. Um, seeds, uh, it, as you know, can, can give you a little gas or wind or indigestion or whatever you want to call it. And so using the English tomatoes, or English tomatoes, English cucumbers allows you to not, um, not have to deal with that. Now, the only downside is price, right? Unless you can find them on sale, uh, the hothouse, the, you know, the, the, I'm gonna say American cucumbers. I, I, I can't remember what, domestic cucumber. Um, those tend to be so much cheaper. Nippur and Evelyn, good to see you. I'm putting this in a bowl. Uh, those tend to be so much cheaper, and a lot of times you can find them uh, three for a dollar or two for a dollar, whereas the English cucumbers can be a dollar all by themselves or two dollars all by themselves. Um, I'm, then my next ingredient is a bell pepper. Uh, so uh, I'm using a yellow bell pepper, uh, pasticcio, Greek lasagna, yum, kale. Mm, 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 mm. I'm using the yellow just for color. You know, we've had this conversation several times, but if you're new, um, then you re uh, I, I will just reinforce that all bell peppers start out as green. Uh, those are the least uh, ripened 
and then they go to yellow, and then they go to red, which is why, or you know, yellow, orange, and red, which is why the colored ones, the those bell peppers that are other than green, obviously will be more expensive uh, because um, those take longer to ripen. And so, you know, there you go. Uh, I, I got this at Sam's because I got a big bag of multicolored, and so it was a it was a good deal. Um, we take out the seeds, so as you can tell, I just cut all the way around that, and there's our seed bundle. I'm gonna put this in my um, scrap bowl because that will go. Are these from your garden? No, Heather. Um, I did not plant bell peppers. Uh, I did plant banana peppers and I have two ready to pick. I, I planted jalapeno peppers and I think I've got one almost ready to pick, um, but, but no bell peppers this year. Uh, I had a problem with them in the past. And so this year, um, I just tried some new stuff. I'm excited because I, I've got some eggplants that are quite lovely and, um, and I'm, I'm very excited that they're getting kind of close to pick, right? All right, so uh, a whole pepper. Uh, if you don't like any of these ingredients, one of these things, did you try anything new in your garden this year? Yes, I tried the eggplant. All right, so I've got this, oh, tomatoes. Now you can use a Roma tomato, uh, a beefsteak tomato. You could use grape tomatoes. These are cherry, tom I mean, I'm sorry, you could use a cherry tomato. These are grape tomatoes. Obviously, the cherry ones are round and the grape ones look like a grape, right? I'm gonna go ahead and cut these as well. Because you know, perfect bite and all. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cut them long ways and toss those in the bowl. Uh, so I did try uh, some new kinds of tomatoes this year. And then we also, hey Kim, good morning. We, um, the, obviously the eggplant, that was new. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, I've got sugar peas growing and the radishes. I had never grown radishes. And so, uh, and those have been tasty. Um, I didn't plant them correctly. Uh, so you're supposed to, <laughs> and I should know this, my grandparents, good morning, mom. Uh, my grandparents had a huge garden, and um, I want to say it was probably a quarter of an acre, maybe. Could have been half an acre. I'm not, I'm not good on that, but um, mom might know how big, how big the, the garden was. But there was everything in that garden. And when I was growing, I always swore I would never have a garden. And, and the reason why is because every night after dinner... Uh, my sister and I would usually have to go with my dad and my grandfather to work in the garden. And I always thought it was unfair because my mom and my grandmother never had to work in the garden because they would have to do the dishes, right? I'm like, I'll do the dishes if I don't have to be outside in the grossness. <laughs> so, um, how many tomatoes? Now, I have the whole carton here, but quite frankly, I don't think we need that many. So, so maybe half of the carton. Good morning, Deanne, good to see you. Hi, Nan, good to see you. So for those of you coming in late, we're doing a Greek layered dip. Uh, we've cut up a half of an English cucumber, diced it up. We have diced up a yellow bell pepper, and now we've just taken some grape tomatoes and cut those in half. <clears throat> All right, so look how colorful. Isn't this a colorful mix already? All right, now I know that in a layer dip, you really should do layer, layer, layer. I'm, I'm gonna do it a little differently because I want this top layer to be seasoned really well. Um, I am gonna add some green onions. These are gonna be, you might think these are interesting because they don't really have a, a thing on them. What happened is, good morning, Nan, and. I know, the bowl is nice. I believe that's an Andes. Yes, it is. So, um, I don't know if you know this, but when you have green onions and you chop off the end with all the, the root ball on it, when you're done, if you will stick that root ball in a glass of water, 
uh, it will grow another green onion. Well, so that's what all these are. These are from the root balls and then that's it. So uh, I always say you can always, for green onions, you can always get at least two helpings out of a, a batch of green onions if you're willing to put them in a, in a glass of water. Anita, good to see you. And so that's handy. I, I just think, um, Nan, it's so good to see you. Um, I, I think as we're, as prices in the grocery store are going up, um, it's just more and more important for us to figure out how to save money. Um, it was one of the reasons that I, um, you know, did the dollar store dinner. Though I have to tell you, uh, that Texas toast was a dollar and the cheapest I have found it in the grocery store was two something. Um, there were several things that we bought uh, at the dollar store that I was just amazed was only a dollar. Okay, so there's my green onion. If you don't like green onion, or if you'd like a different color in here, please feel free to use like a purple onion. That would, that would be pretty. Um, you could use a shallot, or if you're watching those Food Network folks, a shallot. <laughs> Do you have a shallot? All right, the last, uh, the two other things I'm gonna put in here um, so we have several layers. We're just mixing the layers. Um, this is parsley. Now this is from my garden outside. Uh, you could just buy some parsley. Um, my, I got a few ends that needed to be tipped, but that's okay. Um, and I'm just gonna put this down. Well, maybe I am. Put it all, there we go. All right, so here's my bunch of parsley. Uh, you don't have to use parsley in this. Uh, you might want to use dill in this. That might be a nice flavor. Um, I really just didn't want to buy anything. I just wanted to use what I had. Uh, probably could use cilantro in here. Fresh herbs just um, lead everything to, a, a, I think, an out of this world flavor, right? It just kind of makes you go, oh, look at that. Oh, Jess is in here wandering around, so that means something. I don't know what. Oh, okay. Now I'm gonna put those ends in my scrap bucket. Um, I made a big pot of, um, of uh, stock the other day. And you remember I told you when I did it the first time and I used those, uh, that purple cabbage, that red cabbage, and it turned the stock like dark purple, which was fine, because you know, you can just use that as your beef stock. This last time, I didn't realize that I had put some potato skins in there from when I did the purple potatoes. So the stock was once again purple. So, all right, so again, there we go. There's our parsley. I've just finally chopped that up, and there we go. La, la, la. There, you knew I was gonna say it, right? Okay, so. What do we have in here? Again, we have an English, a half of an English cucumber. We have a yellow bell pepper. We have some great tomatoes that have been halved. Uh, we have a couple of green onions and we have a small bunch of parsley. Now this would be a lovely salad all by itself, right? Wouldn't you agree? Yum. Um, and, and quite frankly, when the summer gets here, that may be something we look at, right? All right, I'm gonna go ahead. The reason I've done all of this in a bowl instead of doing it in layers like you would think I would do on a layer dip is because I wanna dress this. I wanna go ahead and dress all my vegetables so that they have uh, just, it. we've notched up the flavor just a little bit more. So <clears throat> here's my dressing. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar uh, yes, watch me measure, okay? Tablespoon of red wine vinegar. Uh, we're gonna need about a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. I just got it all over me and the bowl and my apron. And there you go. It's because I had it upside down. Look at this, look. Ugh. All right, um, good thing. That's why you always have to have the wet wipey next to you to get when you make a mess. We have mustard everywhere. It's a good thing I like mustard, right? Do you like mustard? I'm one of those when, if I buy a fast food sandwich, I ask for mustard instead of mayonnaise. And you know what? I love the taste of all different kinds of mustards. 
Um, but I think I started doing that, I, you know, when I was trying to watch calories at some point. That's not really the case now. Now I just like mustard. All right. Um, we are going to need some lemon juice. I'm, I know, I know you're going, really? You couldn't have bought a lemon and cut it and squeezed it? I know, but I just need a squirt. There we go. And now we're gonna need some, um, some other seasonings to go in here that aren't liquid. <clears throat> I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon of dried oregano. Again, if you don't have this, it, it's not a game changer, right? But again, another layer uh, of seasoning. We're going to put salt. I'm gonna do a, a teaspoon. And pepper, maybe a half a teaspoon. So I asked earlier, but it was before several of you got on, about what your favorite, um, Gail was the only one that answered, uh, what your favorite Greek or Mediterranean dish is. Um, I love um, falafel, I love hummus, I love tabbouleh, um, I love spanakopita, ooh, yum, all of those. There's actually a mustard museum in Wisconsin. <laughs> Gail, really? Now that's something, that's something I can get behind, right? All right, now one of the last layers that we're gonna put on this dip, uh, once I start putting it in a bowl, good morning, Sue, is you can use either feta cheese or I'm using goat cheese. Really, doesn't matter. Um, very similar. Um, I tend to think that, that when it's labeled goat cheese, it's a little milder than when it's labeled feta cheese. So that being said, this is gonna go on the very top of my dip, but I'm gonna get just a little bit, so, so maybe a tablespoon or so, there we go, um, in there because once I mix this around, it, the, the cheese will, will get a little creamy and then we get, a, again, another layer, right? Uh, of seasoning. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Did anybody think that this was really hard? Good morning, Susan, good to see you. Did anybody think that was hard? Oh, all right, so see, I've stirred it, and because I stirred it, let me, let me just push up. Um, can you see that it looks a little creamy on there now? So between the mustard and that little bit of cheese, I've never kicked a, a gyro out of, yeah. I love gyros too. I'm gonna put a little bit more in there. I just like that creamy, creamy flavor. All right, now I'm gonna let this set just for a bit. Get that mustard off my handle. And then we're gonna start our layers, okay? I'm gonna use a round bowl, but please feel free if you want. Use a square bowl, use a rectangle dish. Um, wholly up to you, doesn't really matter. Uh, uh, what size you use. Um, and again, the good thing about this is you can make it however big or small that you want to. This is another one of those recipes that I want to encourage that if you don't like a particular ingredient that I'm using, either leave it out or replace it with something you do like. This should really be fun and it should be ideas um, that give that inspire you, right? Hummus is super easy to make. That being said, Gail, though I know it is super easy to make, I bought it this time. <laughs> Good morning, Barbara. All right, so I bought hummus, and you notice that I didn't, I know somebody was waiting for the garlic, right? I put no garlic or garlic powder or granulated garlic in my veggies over there. And the reason, the reason that I didn't is because I got a garlic flavored hummus. Um, what makes it garlic flavored? Well, one, there's a big wad of garlic right there in the center. And so I'm gonna actually give that a stir because we, um, we want it all yummy and every bite perfect. Barbara, I hope you're doing well today. Anne, Anne Marie is here and Anne is here from the UK. All right, so again, store-bought hummus, any kind you want, right? So they have roasted red pepper, they have plain, they have spicy, 
anything you want, all right? So this is our hummus store-bought. I am going to also put something on our salads that, um, that Jessica doesn't like. Hey, Julie from Northwest Houston, I was worried about you. Um, oh, I do have to do a shout out to Julie's husband, Rob. Um, Rob, for many, many years now, has been doing um, an event called Swim Across America. And for years, he went to San Francisco, I believe it was San Francisco, and swam across the harbor or the bay. I think it's the Bay, San Francisco Harbor, San Francisco Bay. I don't know. Anyway, um, and obviously to raise money um, for cancer. I can't remember. Julie, you'll have to help me. Anyway, but they just got back from another Swim Across America that was not in San Francisco. And um, Rob is, Rob is um, uh, also the one that took me on my first Living Waters uh, mission trip. So... You have your ups and down days. Today, my husband is home with me, and it's our 48th anniversary of meeting each other. Oh, my gosh. Happy anniversary. I bet you are cheery, Barbara. You forgot to turn your alarms off. Oh, yes. Yes, it was San Francisco Bay. Anyway, so Rob is, is really um, a hero, I think, because he, he does so much for other folks. All right, so... Um, because Jessica does not like Kalametta olives, which I'm going to be using, or black olives or green olives, she doesn't like olives at all, I, um, I'm putting together, uh, I pulled this one out because it matches my coffee mug, and I decided I needed to be all matchy today. So I'm gonna make a little bitty one for her. You might have somebody in your family that doesn't like all the same things that you like, and that's okay. It's all right to get a smaller bowl and then do, a, a, like I said, a dip just for one, okay? So we're gonna put hummus on the very bottom of this and we're gonna put hummus on the bottom of this pie plate. This is probably a little big for what I'm doing. Um, actually, it's way too big. You know what, now that I look at that, I'm gonna get a different I'm gonna get a different one. This is way too big. I, I didn't plan well. One moment, please. One moment, please. Let me see what I wanna do. I think I'm gonna use this one. I think I'm gonna use this dish, all right? So, but again, any size that you want, this is just way big. Uh, you could do a huge one of these, right? If you did a huge one, you would probably need to get um, a lot more hummus than just this one container. Um, Cause I really think it had like, I don't know, three or four ounces in it. So it, it wasn't a whole lot. I'm looking at this and it is probably three quarters of a cup of hummus maybe. And so, well, and then I took some out for Jess's. So um, anyway. So there you go. Um, you might, if you're gonna make this for a party or for a, a family gathering or a large get together, you might wanna double the amount of hummus and other ingredients. Uh, but really this is, this is for our lunch. So, um, although Philip will be very upset with me if he comes home and there is none left because I did mention that this is what we were gonna make. We were gonna make this, I was gonna make this on Saturday when, I, when we didn't have the show because, um, because the shower was getting finished. So the glass people were here putting the glass in the shower and when there's anybody here, the dogs just will not stop barking. It's just like rah, 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 the whole time. Okay, so there we go. There's our bottom layer of hummus. Now I'm gonna give you an idea of what your next layer could be, but I'm not gonna do it because I don't like it. The next layer that you could put on here if you like it is Greek yogurt. Now if you are a fan of Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, that would be a lovely layer right there. Or if you have a container of um, tz tz 
tzatziki sauce. There, I think I said it correctly. Tzatziki sauce, if you had a container of that, that would be a lovely second layer as well. Um, or both, right? So you can make this with all of your favorite things. Just wanna give you some ideas, all right? So if that's our first layer, then I'm gonna go ahead and our veggies will be our next layer. So I'm going to take Jessica's and put a nice helping of veggies on top of that. So that goes on top of her hummus. The rest of these, we will pour on top of our, our, our big dish, right? Our big dish of hummus. Um, you might have a little bit of liquid in here. And again, that we put tomatoes in here. Um, did I put olive oil? I, you know what? I forgot the olive oil, but I'm okay. But we did have, um, I may do just a little drizzle on the top because I should have put some olive oil in there. I'll make sure when I post the recipe uh, to, to do it the correct way because I, I don't want you guys missing out on a flavor anywhere. All right, so there we go. Yum. Okay, look at that. Is that gorgeous? So I think I will just do a smidge, just a little drizzle of olive oil across the top. And again, just another layer of flavor. All right. There's our olive oil. Now, here's the thing that she doesn't want that I do, and it is Kalametta ol uh, olives. Now, this is Kalametta olive pieces because I'm lazy, and lazy means that um, I don't have to cut them up. <laughs> so, kind of bad, but there you go. And so, uh, this has got the liquid in there. You obviously could pour out all the liquid or strain it out. You could use a spoon, a slotted spoon, so that you're not getting all the juice. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. So I'm just going to use a fork and, and pull out the little pieces. Um, obviously, it'd be cheaper if you um, bought the whole Kalamata olives. Uh, most grocery stores these days, although I don't know if they do anymore because of COVID, but they would have olive bars. I loved olive bars. Um, all the different kinds of olives you could taste. Okay, there we go. I like lots of olives. Oh, mm -mm. I like lazy too, Barbara. All right, so we just spread our olives out. If you don't like Kalamata olives or you don't have them, you could use um, sliced plain black olives. You obviously could use green olives. Or if you're Jessica and you don't like olives, no olives at all. All right, our last layer is our cheese, either feta or goat, right? And then, um, so let me get a little bit to put on the top of hers. I love this cheese because it is so creamy, right? It just, it is a gorgeous, creamy, creamy um, cheese. Um, there we go. All right, there's hers. And then I'm gonna take the rest, not lazy smart. Well, you know, it depends if I'm trying to save money or save time. Um, so, there you go. All right, so I'm putting this on top. Mm, got a big chunk. Come on. Come on, I say. Break up, break up. Okay. Well, I said break that up. I have been... Um, I have been crocheting again, but, uh, cause you know, I had my infusion. You love Greek food and all is of all kinds. Me too. I do. I love, I'm surprised my mother hasn't said anything because, um, when I ask what your favorite is, but probably her answer is all of it. Um, if, if there's ever a time when I'm taking my mom uh, for a holiday, her birthday or Mother's Day or, any, or something like that, although she was with my sister at this Mother's Day, um, it would be Greek food because she loves everything Greek, right? See, mom said yum. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. Ta and da. Now, you could have um, saved a few of the, uh, of the leaves, 
and diced those up and put on top, which I didn't, but there you go, there's, there's two, um, and put a little bit more of the greenery on top if you so desire, and there we go. Look how pretty that is. Look, look, look. Now, what do you serve this with? Any kind of chips, of course, but I think if we're gonna do this, we ought to do it right. And so I bought a bag of pita chips. Um, this is Parmesan garlic and herb pita chips. Um, but again, you can, I'm not, I have a hard time with the pulling apart. So going with the scissors. Um, so pita chips, you can make your own pita chips, obviously. Um, but so here we go. Are you ready? All right. I'm gonna dip and I'm gonna dig, dig down. Are you ready? You need a pita chip. You ever do a seven layer Mexican dip and the chips break as you go in? That is so not good. Pita chips should, should make you, should be able to go all the way down to the bottom. Okay, here we go. Oh, I need a tomato though. Perfect bite and all, you know. Okay, look at that. Cucumber, tomato, bell pepper, hummus, olive oil, feta cheese, mmm, parsley. All right, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. 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 Creamy, delicious, fresh. You know, we put that red wine vinegar in there and the lemon juice. Mmm. And so it really brightens those vegetables up. Mm. The cheese on the top is very creamy. The olives give us that wow flavor, which is awesome. Mm. This is great. I hope you guys try this. Again, I know one recipe today. It is awesome, and, but, it, but pretty easy. And quite frankly, not too terribly expensive. You can make a small bowl for yourself, a, a medium-sized bowl like for lunch or something, or you know you can double up and make a huge batch of this for a party, and it would be something totally different that people weren't expecting. So I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, we only did the one. I hope that's okay with you. Don't be angry with me, please. Beverly, thank you. I hope you do make it. And um, thank you, Danielle. I appreciate that. And I hope you guys have a great day. So, let me take a sip. Mm. Mm. From my kitchen to yours, I hope everything and every recipe that you make is quick, easy, and of course, especially yummy. I will see you guys again on Thursday. Have a lovely day. Bye, everybody.